Weird Realities explores the paranormal, preternatural, and supernatural worlds that surround us. Here, we delve into those topics that challenge us to think outside the limitations of realism, where we test the boundaries of imagination and are forced to think outside the confines and restrictions of what is normal. We are the creators, the writers, the artists, and the insane. Welcome to our Weird Realities. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Weird Realities, Inc. You've got Morgana Calder and my co-host, Joseph Hansen. And tonight we're going to speak to Mr. Sylvester Barzi. Um, he's written several really good books, and we want to see what enthuses him and, you know, uh, where he's going from here. So... We're so glad you could be with us finally, you know, so we, <laughs> we, we've had to reschedule, but you know, that's yeah. great. It's, it's worked out really well. Mm -hmm. So how are you doing tonight? I am doing amazingly well tonight. How are y'all doing? Very well. Thank you so much. All right. Doing real well. All right. So um, you have the Planet Dead series that everybody i've spoken to and i haven't read it yet but it's 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 downloaded <laughs> but everyone has told me how fantastic this series is so um first uh, off yes tell me why zombies that's always my question <laughs> zombies i i've always loved zombies but for the most part it's just how it allows you to tell your story like the zombie apocalypse just strips everything away from the world and it allows you to have this blank canvas where you can just analyze human behavior and you mm -hmm. can see just like the destruction of society do be it pack mentality um looting just it it just lets you look at the world through a different lens so i always think in zombie um fiction that zombies are the backdrop and it just allows you to tell a broader story. So yes. I just I just love what zombies allow me to do within my world. Right. That's a, um, and what what I have read and everything. Um, I did notice that um, that's something that you focus on is the fact that sometimes the monsters aren't the monsters; they're, yeah. they're the people. And mm -hmm. that's that's what I like in a story. So yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it and everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, killer clowns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that. Killer clowns. Okay, so in the first book, there is a group of brothers who are held up in a circus, and our main our main villain is the ringmaster. Mm -hmm. And as I was writing him, I just I wanted to do something that I felt I didn't see too much in um, zombie fiction. And, you know, I always thought clowns were creepy. It's, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, it'd be it'd be nice to have like an antagonist that was just this crazed cannibalistic clown. But I noticed after um, writing him and his brothers, they um, I, I feel like they represent uh, real life serial killers, like the way that um, the ringmaster interacts with my main characters, Sue and Catherine, is very uh, Ted Bundy-ish. He mm -hmm. kind of um, lowers their uh, their sense of awareness. He allows them to think that everything's okay and everything's gonna be fine. And that's how he gets them into his van and gets them back to the circus. And then I have the older brother who's like dimensions and descriptions are kind of Gacy-ish, like mm -hmm. uh, John Wayne Gacy. And then I have their little brother that's called Frowny. And I felt like his mannerisms and his overall um, interactions with people seemed kind of Jeffrey Dahmer-ish. And that's something that just developed. It wasn't something that I was aiming for. I was just aiming to write three creepy clowns. Mm -hmm. But as I reflected on it, it just because me and my family, uh, me and my wife, we <laughs> love true crime. So I guess somewhere in the back of my mind, it just kind of created that. And I thought that was pretty cool. See, that that's what I was fixing to go with. That's I love true crime. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, oh, wow, this is getting better. You yeah. know, oh, so. <laughs> yeah, we are so addicted to true crime where it's just um, 
we watch like ID and mm -hmm. it's, it's always on in the background. We got like Discovery Plus and they've got like every true crime show that's been on ID. So we're just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I've, I've often commented that, you know, the people that we seem to attract and that we have a lot in common with are way too addicted to true crime. <laughs> 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 so I'm seeing a pattern here yeah. and everything, you know, um, I, I also think it's great too, that you've got such a strong female character, you know, that that's something else that I personally, you know, enjoy seeing because, and especially that it's a woman of color. You don't see that, especially in this genre, it seems like Almost. in everything. So, yeah, yes, definitely. Um, I, I always, when I originally started writing the book, um, I just wanted to build like this amazing final girl mm -hmm. and originally Catherine started out as white and then my wife came to me and she was like why isn't Catherine black and the mm -hmm. first thing that came out of my mouth was that she can't be black and that's when I, it just kind of triggered in my head that growing up watching all these final girls and watching all these horror movies I kind of like brainwashed myself into believing that my main character or a final girl by definition had to be white and I didn't, that didn't sit well with me. So from that point, I just redid the book and um, just never looked back from there. Like every series that I write has mm -hmm. like a strong black woman or a woman of color um, that as the focal point of the story. So yeah, I just, I just want to showcase strong black women because they're, they're what shaped me. My mom, mm -hmm. she, uh, she raised me. I have like four strong sisters, my wife. So that's that's what's around me. So you write what you know, I guess. Well, kudos to your wife. That's hey. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and that is, like I said, you know, because like I said, you know, reality is those women are there. They exist and everything. So like I said, you know, they, they need that, you know, they need to, that to be brought to the forefront and everything. So I think that, you know, that's great that you've done that and everything. So good. Awesome. Yes. Most definitely. Thank you. Oh yeah. 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 So um, what are you working on now? Something continuing this out or? <laughs> um, yeah. My, my plan for planet dead is to finish Catherine's story in the next three books and then just have a kind of like spinoff story where I can just do like individual, um, I guess one shot books based off of different states within the um, the infection or the infected nation. So right. that's that's where I'm planning for that. But um, as far as what I'm doing right now, I break down my my writing into um, segments so I don't get bored because right. I get bored easily. So I'm starting a new project that's um, uh, what would you call it? I guess like a uh, religious apocalypse kind of so i i say that it's like handmaid's tale meets uh -huh. dogma oh and awesome yeah so that's what i'm working on right now so mm -hmm. it's a whole bunch of research of like demons and things mm -hmm. and that's kind of creepy sometimes but <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but I, but i think that's great that you're reaching in different directions and everything because i mean i'm really just starting to read zombie and i was walking dead comics the only oh, zombie so good the only two comics i've ever read was that one and uh kirkman's uh outcast mm -hmm. you know I, I love his style and everything mm -hmm. but uh so like i said you know but i go into a lot of other genres too so like i said you know i, I like people that are multifaceted and that reach into different areas and stuff so that's fantastic Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, people on the outside of zombie fiction don't realize that it's not about the zombies. As a matter of fact, the zombies are more of a prop than mm -hmm. anything else to create the situation. One question I wanted to ask you is, uh, <clears throat> and I've asked other people this question before, so I'll, 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 I'll throw it to you and see how you feel that in your protagonists, your characters that you choose to be, your heroes and your good guys and if you're like me you want someone who you know is both good and has the ability to be bad mm -hmm. um what what do you find to be a good motivator for them to be good i mean a lot of people always use the pretty girl or 
or something as their motivator. To me, that that's kind of weak. I mean, I always go for like an inner strength and a desire of something good they've seen in their life that they want to emulate or something like that. What do you what do you use as a motivator for your protagonist? I think I think every every one of my characters because like in Planet Dead it kind of grew into an ensemble of people. Mm -hmm. So I think every one of them has their own different motivators. Catherine's motivation as far as the uh the initial book goes is to find her family and okay. the fact that she's a mother kind of like drives a lot of her decision making like she comes off as this hard badass who doesn't really care if you're derailing or if if you're gonna die but then in the back of her mind she can't very well let someone just die when she's looking for her son jordan so it's just it, i kind of think that like jordan being missing is kind of like her little um conscience her yes that tells her she has to step forward and she has to do this and she has to do that and sue uh sue's definitely is driven i would say by repentance because she in the uh, book there's a scene where she acknowledges that um her and her friend were drunk driving and while sue was the passenger her friend died mm -hmm. and sue blames herself for not for even getting into that situation so i believe a lot of sue's um a lot of what drives Sue is both survival and making sure that she's living for this person right. who died. So yeah, she's she's trying to live a better life because she feels like this was this ultimate sin that she has to account for. And then there's like there's Peter, who's um, Catherine's brother-in-law. He's just trying to live up to his older brother. Just everyone has their own reasons for why they're on the straight and narrow back back seven eight years ago the reason why i asked back seven eight years ago when i first started getting into this yeah maybe 10 years ago um it was always a rape scene in the beginning protagonist oh. comes in shoots up a couple thousand people yeah walks away with the girl that's way too young for him but they mm. find a way to justify it anyways that was blah 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 it was like so many books have that same premise that when I really started writing my characters, I really, I, I wanted them to have more depth than that, much like what you're doing. I mean, yeah. they actually have a, a reason and they're not just running in to be the, the, um, uh, do sex machina. You know? <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't write rape scenes. That's, that's, I, I don't do that either. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't write it. If anything, same with sex scenes and scenes. I, I'll think <laughs> at it, I'll bring it up to that point, and then I'll walk away. You know? Well, like, I, um, I brought this question up in, like, the group once, and I was just like, oh, sex in the apocalypse. And everybody's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I don't know. Me, I can't get over the whole not washing and things. Boy, isn't that? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense. To me. It's just like, <laughs> but I think it's just because um, my stories – they tend to be like very isolated. They'll take place over the span of like a day or three days. So there's not uh, enough time for me to justify someone being like, oh yeah, let's get it on. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like on it. But people- Jill yeah, and I, people Jill and I during the Walking Dead are like, Ew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people were um, telling me they were just like, yeah, sex is just a part of life. And I was like, oh, yeah, I understand that, but I guess I'd just be that prude in the apocalypse. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and, and here's the thing too, though, as, as an avid reader, I yeah. skim over those scenes. I, I really don't need that kind of detail. If I want that kind of detail, I'll pick up porn. Know. You know? You know, and, <laughs> and I'm the same way. I don't, I don't write beyond the initial kiss and yeah. you know, then I let it go and the smiles afterwards. Yeah. But, you know, the scene itself, no, nah, I, I don't need to go there. If I ever yeah. want to do that, I think it's just going to be like a straight fade to black probably at the end of the chapter thing. Plus, I'd probably have some 14-year-old correcting me. <laughs> <laughs> so sad, but true. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up your books. Are they on Audible? Um, no. I'm I'm I just found a narrator, and we're working on getting audio books. But no, everything's uh, everything's ebook and paperback. Um, I'm okay. exclusive with Amazon right now. Yeah, and, I, I'm exclusive with Amazon too, yeah. but I do do Audible. Yeah, which I is just, Amazon. I, I just released a um. A free book that's available on all all the platforms. So, um, oh, okay. That's, that's Planet Dead, Briggs Boys mixtape, and yeah, that's everywhere. So that tells the story of um, Catherine's husband Robert and her son Jordan. So that was fun. That was fun. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah well, I recommend Audible. I make more money off Audible than I do yeah. off of print. Yeah. And, everyone tells um, me that. So that's what yeah. I. It, was, it just took a while. Like, I was trying to, like, paying a narrator outright was not feasible for me. And then I couldn't, I, I had one that I was going to do a royalty split with, but she kind of bailed on me. She didn't feel too confident in um, the changing her tone for the amount of male characters there was. Oh, I see. Yeah. But I found, I found one and we clicked very well. And I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. Good, good. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's worth it. It is an expense. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a couple out there that are on royalty share, and I regret it. <laughs> um, I can't make any changes to it for seven years without yeah. going to them and paying them more money. So, uh, you know, and so it restricts your freedom. But uh, you're right, paying outright. I have books waiting for me to. To, to sell a lot more books so I can have them put on Audible. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to, like, crowdfund it. That was what I was originally going to do because I had one narrator who I really wanted, and she was, like, a professional actress. She did um, – she's on, like, um, I think a show called The Neighbors and stuff, and I was trying to get her, and I was crowdfunding. But it's – you have to be, I feel like you have to be really good at crowdfunding and marketing for it to be successful, and I am not. So <laughs> it, it, it did not pick up. That is not true. You're a great marketer. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> and uh, I do it professionally, so I know. Oh. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm in all of the, some of the stuff you come up with. You come up with some great stuff. Oh, thanks. So. Wow, marketing. But I'll tell you this. I went through probably 150 voice actors looking for an audible person for my yeah. book. And the one, it's like I heard his voice and I knew this is the guy I want to read my book. Yeah. It was just the voice I was hearing in my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was not in the top tier. He's a new, he's a newcomer. He does it part time. He's a cop. Yeah. Um, he's an ex Marine. And I, I'm Southern, so I wanted someone who is Southern, like a real Southern accent, not yeah. somebody pretending. And he lived in South Louisiana, and when Katrina oh. hit, he moved to Arkansas, so he had the perfect voice. Mm -hmm. And it, the first book I did like a short, a short book, and it was less than four hundred dollars. Oh, wow. So. Don't sell yourself short listening to people who you think aren't good enough. Sure. You might be surprised. Yeah. No, I, the, guy, um, the guy I've settled on now, he's he's pretty new. He's done a few before me, but he does he does the transition between male and female so well. And yes. every female has their own voice and their own identity, and you can hear it. I'm really I really got lucky with Neil and uh I'm gonna try to get him. As more as time goes on. Well, I I was going the um the the normal like audition process through ACX, but um I don't know. Like I said, it was it just wasn't working. So I I did it a little differently. I went into a lot of the um like creative <laughs> groups that I was in, and I let people know what I was trying to do, and I got a few auditions. I got a lot of auditions from people who were trying to be narrators and who are willing to do royalty splits so my my narrator she's definitely new to it she's um she's not new to writing but she's she's new to the narration process but she's very good at it so cool. um yeah so i'm just i'm just looking forward to stepping into um 
the, the audio world because that's how I read all my books now. I everything's mm -hmm. audio for me. Yeah. See, I, I'm just getting back into it because I, I think I, I know Hadley's heard this before, but my first experience was when they were doing CDs before Audible, you know, was created. Yeah. And I picked up an Anne Rice book, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. Well, the narrator was trying to do a Louisiana accent and a Southern Mississippi accent and a little boy ghost. And he sucked at all of them. You know, I mean, it was just one of those things. He did not do Southern or Cajun well at all. So it was 20 years before I would even attempt to listen to another one. I mean, it, it was bad. <laughs> so yeah. I, it, It's gotten so much better. You know, um, yeah. I, I've been very happy, you know, it's, since I've gotten back into it. It's, it's come a long way. Oh, yeah, it's, so, it definitely has. I mean, a bad uh, narrator can ruin it. Yeah, the, the narrator can definitely uh, make or break things. I, I remember recently, like, um, I just downloaded the new box set of the Slow Burn series. And, like, I popped it on. And I think it was a new narrator. Or maybe I had to listen to it for a while. But I was like, this is the same person. I was already angry. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, this is the same. This is gonna work. So I'm sitting there for like four chapters, and I was just like, okay, fine. I guess it's alright. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you yeah, know, like, if you get the the wrong narrator, I won't listen. If it's somebody <laughs> who is like, it's the wrong tone of voice for me. Yeah. Um, and it's there's some actor. I think his name is Campbell Scott. I can't listen to anything he narrates because his voice is just not something I can listen to. There, there are some people where I've definitely stopped because I was just like, this isn't going to work. Bronson, <laughs> Bronson Pit, Pin, Pin he's very popular, and I just mm -hmm. I just can't even listen to hey, him. Like, yeah. I, I have a friend that won't watch a Vin Diesel movie for the same reason. She hates his voice. <laughs> hates his voice. Because I asked her one day, I'm like, why do you hate him so bad? He plays in so many good movies. She goes, yeah. I can't listen to him. And I'm like, seriously, it's his voice. She goes, yep, I cannot listen to it. <laughs> she goes, the only reason that she'll watch uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is all he says is I'm Groot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, I I I'll let yeah. it go. <laughs> now, so, I could I could listen to Ray Chase read Itsy Bitsy Spider. I mean, he's got such mm -hmm. a fantastic voice. I would listen to that all day long. So a good narrator yeah. is critical. Critical. Mm -hmm. I would love to get to the point where, you know, everyone gets those celebrity narrators and stuff. Like, yeah. I've been seeing a lot of celebrities get into narration. Mm -hmm. Like, um, was it? Um, Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was thinking of Will Wheaton. <laughs> and then Samuel yeah. Jackson um, narrated uh, Go to Fuck to Sleep. And I thought, that was <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I've got to get good. that. <laughs> I could listen to him all day and uh, night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like the book itself is hilarious, but then mm -hmm. when you hear Samuel L. Jackson narrate it, I'm just like, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's awesome. He's and you know, he I met him one time. Oh, they were you? doing, yeah, they were doing a time to kill in uh the town I lived in. Part of it was there, part of it was in um the town next to us. Mm -hmm. And uh the grocery store where my mom worked at, they they actually hosted a meet and greet with him. And uh I knew the manager. So when I walked in, I didn't even realize he was there. He's like, come here. You've got to meet him. You've got to meet him and everything. Right. I was so upset. He did not say motherfucker one time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was like the, the before his book motherfucker. I know. I know. But you before know. the plane, like, maybe. <laughs> yeah. 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 But he was, I mean, he was just, I mean, just down to earth great guy i mean yeah. he was awesome you know yeah. so so at least i can say i did get to meet him but he's the person i would like to narrate my life story you know after i'm rich and famous and oh, all that yeah. good stuff <laughs> so. yeah. i can see it now she was a motherfucker that's right <laughs> there you go yeah. that's it <laughs> so don't get me wrong morgan freeman would be great too but i don't think my life was that calm yeah this, this, this no. problem yeah, he, that. he's too calm for me I definitely mm -hmm. would like Samuel Jackson to, because there's some times where I need some F-bombs dropped. Yes, yes, sir. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, you um, guys lead exciting lives. I'd be like James Earl Jones. <laughs> <laughs> he was old. He was slow. He was fat. <laughs> <laughs> he was 
Darth Vader. How can you say that? <laughs> <laughs> he was also in that Conan movie. He was what? What was his name? It was the, oh, he was the, the snake. snake God. Yeah. Yeah. Snake, yeah. Oh, that Empire. That was. That was. I love the first Conan movie. I thought that was excellent. Me and my wife. I don't know what we we're. I think we were playing um, a horror trivia game or something. But she was trying to give me a clue, and she was like. Oh, he plays Darth Vader, and I was just like James Earl Jones. She was like, "No," and then I was just <laughs> like, "Okay." So I thought it was like, "Did you do the the?" Um, I forget his name, there, like Anakin, and she was like, "No," and I was like, "Then I have no idea who the hell you're talking." <laughs> and she's like, "Person played Darth Vader." I was like, I, "I don't think we're talking about the same thing." Because this only <laughs> never figured it out. <laughs> Oh, I, was she talking about like before he became bad? What was that guy's name? Because uh, he was so bad. Anakin, he played Anakin. Yeah. Christensen. Christensen. Yeah, Christensen. I named him. She said no. So unless she was talking about the little kid, I have no <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to ask her. <laughs> because she was just like, no, the one that played in like the the original, and I was just like, I don't know. It was James Earl Jones? I didn't know it was James Earl Jones. <laughs> No, I think there was someone before James Earl Jones, like the first two. No, she said it like she knew, so I'm definitely gonna have to ask her. But mm -hmm. it's just like she, yeah, she. You know, when someone gives you that look, like you should know this. I was like, uh. <laughs> I'll, I'll admit, I'll admit, I couldn't, I couldn't watch the second three or the prequels. They just. Uh, Jar Jar was, Binks was enough to make me vomit. I was hyped for the prequels, and then I saw the first one. And then I was like highly irritated. I skipped school to watch it. I was just like, <laughs> I could have been learning something. <laughs> but they weren't as good as the original. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of them, the, everything else in the whole saga, I enjoy. I don't like the episode one. Episode one, I did not enjoy. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I do. I've love seen Dark some of the ones. animated ones that were pretty good. Oh, yeah. The animated yeah. ones are great. Yeah. But they have so much freedom with the animated <laughs> ones. Yeah, it's like they can tell so many different stories when it comes to animation. That's sure. yeah. Yeah. Well, All someday right. one of us is going to be that famous. I don't know. That'll mm. be one of us. All of us. All of us. us. Pull each That's other up. That's there's room. Intriguing. There's room. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, who would you pick to play your main character? Yeah. Ooh. Um. There is a actress, I, I believe her name is Ra Ra or Goo Goo Ra Ra or something, but she she was in um ah, she was in Bell and she was also in this movie a something paradox what was uh oh cloverfield paradox she was the main character in cloverfield paradox okay. i would love her to play catherine <laughs> but i asked my fans who they wanted and they all went with um i'm terrible with names <laughs> but she was in the guardian of the galaxy too she was green oh uh you're talking about uh zoe saldana yeah yeah her. yeah i was outvoted by my fan base <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and, and okay, I, I, I understand that. And, and, you know, without fans, nobody would ever get anywhere. Mm -hmm. But you're the person who, who envisioned Catherine. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, and, and hey, I'm guilty of it too. You know, I mean, there have been movies I'm like, why the hell would they pick this person to play mm -hmm. this? You know, uh, the, um, the original, The Stand. The, mm -hmm. They did it as like a um, miniseries, miniseries on television, mm -hmm. and they picked Molly Ringwald to be the main character, and I was ticked <laughs> because she was nothing like the character in the book. You yeah. know, I mean, she just wasn't. No, so, she wasn't. yeah. So, I, I think mean, she I, did pretty well, though. She did okay, but uh, it's it's just some people. I think it was bad casting, though. I would agree mm -hmm. with that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think they could have picked someone better. Yeah, well, Hollywood gets kind of stuck on like casting people over and over again, especially if they have like a strong body of work or just a name. Yeah, they'll just so yeah. that happens a lot. 
Like I love um, Edris Elba. I yes. Love yes. You see him everywhere. Yes. Everywhere. <laughs> so, it's, it's crazy. And I, I mean, I'll see whatever movie he's in, mm -hmm. but it, it just blows my mind to be like, oh, well, he was in Thor and now he's in Fast and the Furious. And now he's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a, uh, I'm a huge fan of his too. And this weekend, yeah. my husband watched some Western, the harder oh, they fall. Yeah. And to see amazing. him to be such a terrible person, I was heartbroken. <laughs> I mean, he did fantastic. He did. I feel but, like I see like. I don't know. I guess I feel like I followed him for so long that mm -hmm. he was always he he played a lot of bad people for a while. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You know, I just I, I guess he's gotten so far past that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was it was hard. But I mean, like no. I said, he did a fantastic job. Oh, I mean, it's a really good movie. Amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. um, my, me and my dad, we uh, we watched Westerns a lot. Mm -hmm when I was and growing up, so yeah. to just see this all-Black Western with a strong cast, mm -hmm. um, it's something that I know he would have loved. He passed on about four years ago. Which one was that? All-Black um, Western? The, the Harder They Fall. It just oh, came really? out on okay. Netflix. Yep. Yep. Yeah, on so, Netflix. yeah oh, I, 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 I was just watching it knowing he would have loved it. So yeah. See, I, I don't like Westerns. My uh, Westerns are, um, oh, the one that Johnny Depp was in that got crashed. I mean, it was so bad. Uh, mm -hmm. The Long Ranger. Oh. The Long Ranger. <laughs> I don't think that counts as a Western, does yeah. it? I thought it was funny. Exactly. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. The yeah. same thing, uh, The Wild Wild West with Will Smith. I, love I loved. That was good. And so basically, I have you been... love the Westerns that like hardcore Western people don't like. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. With the exception, and it's because I've been a captive audience so many times. My husband could watch Tombstone. 24 7 and I, I like i said i don't really like westerns but i have seen that one so much that it just kind of grew on me that's so one you, of my favorite you've never, you've never read louis lamour my father did but no that's the only author i ever saw my father read fiction was louis lamour he was and, the only author that my father and i had in common so mm -hmm. just, we yep. both read louis lamour did how about you, Sylvester? Have you read any Louis L'Amour? No. Well, no. As, as far as Westerns go for me, it's um, it's all been strictly visual. It's just been like my my dad, he was he was big on Clint Eastwood and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Those those westerns. And I was those I was Western. big on more closer to modern ones. So like the Quick and the Dead. Um mm -hmm. the That was good. Yeah, they those are those were my westerns and I love them. Mm -hmm. And and then I, we got to a point where me and him, um, we I, re, I remember vividly we got a new like cable package, and it came with like the Western Channel and mm -hmm. I think American History Channel. So yeah. we got into like learning the the history of the West a lot, and we we got into that. So that was yeah. that was cool. And That's cool. I've all, I always wanted to be a cowboy. Like I felt like me and Billy the Kid had some kind of connection. Like he always popped up in some point in my life it's mm -hmm. weird it'll be like all oh, documentaries will pop up or i found out he was from new york and all this stuff and that's where i'm from so i just always felt like i had a connection with billy the kid so i always wanted to be a cowboy mm -hmm. but you see i love westerns but i never wanted to be a cowboy I, no. <laughs> well, no, I, I kind of go back a little further right mm -hmm. i would have uh you know maybe crow magnon days oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's too that's too far back for me. That's a lot of guesses yeah. for me. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, there there weren't enough baths back then for me. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm like you, Sylvester. I, I I like that regular bath, you know. <laughs> I think I would have I think I would have made an excellent flint napper. Yeah. <laughs> Either that or the cave finder or the spear straightener. I don't know. Have you guys ever have you ever read any J, uh Gene Hall? Mm -hmm. uh, that when she first started the that cave yeah. of the uh, clan of the cave bear that yeah. that series i did yeah. read those back when they came out see yeah. with me it's like there's so much speculation about that like period of time and stuff right. and i wouldn't want to like travel back there and then find out there were aliens and and they were like <laughs> supreme overlords i don't want to find that out yeah. like i don't want to find that out the hard way so i'll i'll, I'll go to the wild west where you gotta, you gotta, when you when you hear about 
all that speculation. It's like aliens and everything. You've got to take humanity's arrogance in as a factor because yeah. modern humans will always look back at Cro-Magnon days as being ignorant and mm -hmm. dumb and you know they're not as well of course they're not as educated but they think that the brain doesn't operate the way it does for us today when in truth just simple survival they you know their synapses were going mm -hmm. uh, you know 100 miles a minute you know um mm -hmm. so it's just you gotta whenever you hear any kind of speculation about anything you gotta remove the human arrogance out of it That's it's like true. people who say that dogs don't feel love that's their arrogance saying they're trying to put themselves up above another animal that's, that's just insane. because they can't handle the insecurity of they baby. need to be my dogs <laughs> <laughs> my dogs just, love me if they the don't further, they don't get fed <laughs> the further along we go in in the world we find out how wrong society is about so many things like i so just found amazing. out that doctors used to believe babies didn't feel pain. So oh, they yeah. To, oh, yeah. yeah. I heard that too. Yeah. They used to do surgeries on babies without anesthesia because yep. they felt like they didn't feel pain. And I'm just like, this How is insane. You like, you know, when my son was born and they were going to do his circumcision, they gave me the option of with or without anesthesia. And I'm like, why would I do it without? Yeah. Like, they, they don't feel. I'm like, no, give him something. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. We're going to go on the assumption that he does feel something. Yeah, yeah you know, and, and, you know, not feeling pain. Does that even extend to the tip of the penis? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's just crazy that the further along we get in society, the more things we learn mm -hmm. we were dead wrong about. So, it's, oh, yeah. it's just well, crazy. especially when it comes to things like mental health. Oh, yes. so many, so many atrocities were committed by people who thought they were doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. They thought they were actually helping people, and mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's just horrific. Yeah. What some of the things that were done to people. Yeah. Just it, there's um in my in my book that I just released, they everything takes place in this mental health in this mental hospital that that's in Georgia. It's mm -hmm. abandoned now. I think it's called um Central State. But at some point it was like the largest mental hospital in the world. And just the things they did to those people trying to quote unquote cure them and, right. and the fact that there were there were husbands who would just drop their wives off because they were they Hysterical. didn't agree with them yeah <laughs> yeah and, right and then you're just, like, would do it just off of their their word i mean there was no court case to find out yeah. if they truly were and it, it was just somebody saying they were. And we feel like that we've come so far since then, but it's it's not true. There there are still cases where people have been sent to a mental hospital and been locked there, even though they're mentally sane. Mm -hmm. But there's like, um, although it's a fictional movie, it it talks about a real thing that mental hospitals do. It's called um, Unsane, mm -hmm. and they talked about the practice of people who will go and they'll admit themselves for evaluation. And within the contract that you sign, if they deem that you're mentally unstable, they'll keep you there. And they'll just keep you there until your insurance runs out and then they'll let you go. So <laughs> they'll take all the insurance payments and then they'll wow. release you. And by then, sometimes that'll drive a sane person crazy. Oh and, yeah. Yeah. There was My this wife? one. Oh, sorry. There's, there's. Well, go ahead. You were talking. I thought you were done. Oh, uh, there's this one woman. She went to um, visit someone at a mental hospital, and they got confused and thought she was one of the patients. And as they were dragging her in, she was yelling things like, "I'm not insane." Um, <laughs> she said that. Um, was it? I know the president. He follows me on Twitter, which isn't the soundest thing to say. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So yeah, she was locked up for like a month or so, and then her family was like, "She's not insane." And it was like during Obama, so they're like, "Obama does follow her on Twitter." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, that stuff like terrifies me, especially because I deal with depression and anxiety. So it would suck to go into 
a counseling session and just not come out. That thing terrifies me. So yeah. 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 Well, you yeah. know, your point, your point about things um yeah, uh, relearning things as we go throughout human history and human the future of humanity and mm -hmm how we relearn things and see how we were so wrong about things in the past. That's a, that's a very valid point. You know, I mean, so many people assume that they know this, that, or the other thing, and that what they believe is a reality that can never be, you know, changed. Well, that's why I like the, the concept of science and everything is a theory mm -hmm. because new information can change that theory. And I think we, I think we have to approach a lot of things in life more on that level where, you know, everything is a theory, but we can get new data, new information that will, will change our minds and change yeah. our feelings. And, you know, I mean, so that's a very valid point you bring up. And I, I, I agree 100%. You know, now, my, my <laughs> wife was, a, is an EMT and, um, they would bring, I think she was an EMT when they did this, but they would bring people down from Kuchiching up in northern Minnesota, which is like a retirement home for people who uh, have life sentences in prison. And, and they would bring EMTs down to talk to her. And some of these people, very dangerous, very crazy, you know, and if you're that crazy where you have a life sentence and you're still a threat to society in your 70s and 80s, you got to wonder, you know, isn't that some kind of mental health issue right there? I would think, but mm -hmm. <laughs> anyways, I really had no point there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't I'm know sorry. if I would move someone that's like, I've got a life sentence to kind of like a retirement time. Cause if I had a life sentence and I'm in my eighties and you're moving me to this kind of like low security. Thing, oh no, it's not low security. Okay. <laughs> That's, that no, is it's good very to know. I was like, I'm going to make a run for it. <laughs> <Yeah>, right. <laughs> um, there's actually. Oh, a... they were down here teaching her self-defense for violent. They were teaching for violent patients. When they get violent patients, they brought the guards down and the EMTs down from this prison for retired wow. lifers to teach them to self-defense for when, in case they ran into something. Wow. She just flagged me down and corrected me and said, you're an, <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> this is what happened. <laughs> there is a, a book that I read. It's been probably 12, 14 years ago. It's uh, Isaac Asimov and Stephen Baker, I think was the other one called The Light of Other Days. And the premise is that scientists open a wormhole and figure out how they can use it to transport goods from one location to the other in seconds instead of overseas and weeks and stuff. Well, during all of that, they also discover that they can hear other people's thoughts. So, of course, then society starts falling apart because, you know, I can hear what you're thinking about me. And then it moves on into they can go back in history. They totally unravel everything everyone believes. You know, it's like uh, what really happened with the Kennedy assassination. They found out, you know, what really happened with uh, uh, Booth shooting Abraham Lincoln. You know, I mean, it just all of these things, religion fell apart because everything all these religions believed weren't true. You know, as they say, you know, uh, the, the, the victor writes history, more or less. Mm -hmm. Well, when they could actually see what was going on. And I mean, it was crazy, you know, the things that we had wrong. But, you know, that book always stuck with me because of that. Yeah. You know, as we learn new stuff, it's like, you know, that book's coming true more and more. That's <laughs> very, that's well, I was going to say, that reminds me of the Internet. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, that's when somebody tells me, oh, I heard it on Facebook. Just shut up. Just don't <laughs> talk to me. If you believe that because you read it on Facebook. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm thinking about the reading people's thoughts. People think that they can think something and just say it now. Oh, yeah. Without having any courtesy. Oh, that yeah. kills me. Absolutely. I'm right there with you. Yeah. I mean, you know, because common decency still should exist. I mean, it doesn't so much, but it really should. You know, yeah. if I can't say it to you standing 
two feet from you, I shouldn't be saying it to you across the internet. Oh, I agree. I my agree. wife, she she tells me to stop it a lot, but I have like a, a bad habit of like trolling trolls. So yeah. like, I'll just be on the internet and I'll see someone say something and they're just, I just follow it for a little bit. And then I, I just I cyber stalk them for a day and I uh -huh. just, till the point that they block me. And yeah. 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 My wife said leave the trolls alone. Look, I, I used to be, I used to be that person too. And um, I'll be honest with you. I mean, at one point I was blocked by our governor, lieutenant governor, <laughs> and the secretary of state uh, because they're morons. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, so, um, but so I, this I enjoy, is recently. Yeah, this is <laughs> you said I used to be like, no, I, like I, it was I, a while ago. That was yesterday. Used to be yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I, honest hey, yesterday no, I have be. left this, this administration alone. I, I don't go on their yeah. sites or anything, but the last administration, oh yeah, they knew me by name. Uh, and, yeah. and like I said, you know, just don't be stupid. You're supposed to be smart. You run yeah. the whole state. Come on. <laughs> this year, this year, I decided to just like let go and let God. I, I'm no longer messing with stupid people. I just, I just block and move on. <laughs> you know? Sylvester Barzi letting Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, you're, you're too stupid for me. Jesus will sort you out. It's okay. There you go. That's it. That's it. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, I find myself retaliating against people and I'll just, yeah. I'll stop halfway through this paragraph long thing. And I'm going, what are you doing? I don't, I don't care that this person thinks. It's, it's especially, <laughs> especially since I'm like, I'm writing full time now and I'm trying to make this like an income. I'll catch myself like, Dan, I'll stop. I'm just like, this isn't going to make me any money. What am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah. That's yeah. it exactly. exactly. Too. Yeah. It's just yeah. getting yourself worked up for no reason mm -hmm. over idiots, you know? Most definitely. You know, and, and they're on both sides of the fence, you know? I mean. Oh, yeah. It's they ridiculous. are. It's ridiculous. When I, <laughs> last year, when I was hunting down troll people, my biggest accomplishment was I ended up having them fight each other. <laughs> That's awesome. Because there was like two of them. And then at some point, they just started arguing with each other. And I was like, well. Hey, I, I mission accomplished. Yeah, he like came out of nowhere. He's like, I mean, this dude's stupid, but that doesn't make any sense. And I was just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Score. That's yeah. right. That's when you know you've done well. Yes. <laughs> that's when you could just move on and like I'll be smiling and better. My wife's like, what? what's that? I was like, I got the trolls today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sleep. If, if you're like if you're like me, the first person to start name calling was lost. Mm -hmm. They're out. You know? You just yeah. you never get your point across by calling somebody an idiot or stupid or uh, See, you know. I agree, and then sometimes I don't because like being in the military, name calling was just normal. So I feel like you still. Well, get that's, your between, point that's between that's between friends face to face. <laughs> you know, I yeah. mean, I got my buddies at Phalanx, and we we harass each other all the time. Yeah. Those are the people you know. I'm yeah. talking about discussions with strangers. Yeah. You know, I just feel if I resort to wanting to call them names, mm -hmm. I'm probably losing the argument. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my wife tends to tell me that I, I'm I'm mean. Sometimes, so sometimes I have to dial back. Like sometimes I'll be in like a wrestling fan group, and I'll be talking, and then somebody's like, "That was uncalled for." I'm like, "I, I didn't even realize I hurt your feelings." I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so. Just tell her you were, you were doing a character study. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we've strayed a little bit off of subject. We did. <laughs> but that's okay. It's been great. Yeah. Um, and uh, like I said, uh, tell everybody where they can find you and all oh, that good okay. stuff. Um, you can find me at my website, www.sylvesterbarzi.com. Um, you can find me all over social media at Sylvester Barzi. Uh, yeah, at Sylvester Barzi. It's just one word. Yep. Gotcha. So, yeah, that's that's where you can find me and find all my books on Amazon and on my website so it's um this year i put out three things i put out planet dead 
Briggs Boys Mixtape, which is free everywhere. I put out uh, Stitches, which is a collection of horror short stories. Um, and that's everywhere as well. And I dived into Kendall Vela and I created a um, a military zombie fiction, post-apocalyptic story, which that was a mouthful, but uh, it's called Generation Slayer. Mm-hmm. And that was that was a lot of fun. So you can find it on Kendall Vela. Okay, awesome. Cool. I would love to keep talking, but I know you have another appointment. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, Sylvester, been- send me all your links. So, when I put this stuff up on YouTube, mm-hmm. I will put it all up there. So, uh, and on Anchor, and that goes everywhere, you know. Okay. That way people can find you really easy. Okay. And don't forget good. that you're a featured author on Horror Writers Inc. Yes, I am a feature author on Horror yes, Writers Inc. <laughs> yep. Well, yep. from my standpoint, Sylvester, it was great getting to know you a little better. Oh, I've seen good. you around since I'm I'm a newcomer to the group, but uh, you always seem to have something witty to say and <laughs> questions, and yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you, Joe. I mean, okay. well, you. You'll have to come back and visit us some more when we've got other stuff going on, Sylvester. It's been a joy. I yes, definitely will. I want to want to talk to you guys about serial killers, Bigfoot, all that weird stuff. Oh, yes. Right. Oh, you just don't even know. Some of my, some of my favorite subjects. Yeah. Me too. Me too. I have a list going, guys. So. <laughs> yeah, we're all about right. to bring back our roundtable okay. discussion. So we're going to really be having some interesting conversations coming up. I love me a roundtable. Yes. Good. Well, we're yeah. good to know. Very All good right. to know. All right. All right, guys, everybody, uh, you can find us on Linktree, L I N K T R dot E E, weird with a Y, realities. And that's got all of our links. And until next time, stay weird. Before you go, be sure to leave us a comment and let our weird team know how they're doing. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us to get notifications when we add new content. We are adding new content three, four, and sometimes five times a month. If you want to keep the conversation going or would like to learn more about our panel of hosts, be sure to check out our link tree. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Weird Realities. It links to our official Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and website.